Hi, I'm Tim Cashel with the Evolve Academy. I'm here with Vincent Ayala from Barco. And we're gonna cover another 7.1 feature, which is input and background backups. Now, I am personally very excited for this feature. I, you, I can, you can see my face. So this is a feature that's been waited for for a long time and it's actually coming to fruition. So I'm happy to be able to bring it with you to the public. Um, so the idea here is that, let's say you have a main and a backup graphics machine yep. or backup or background machine. Mm -hmm. um, if one dies or loses a sync, you can automatically have it go to another source. Yeah. Very plain and simple, that's the way it works. Yeah. Yep, so you wanna walk us through that little procedure? For sure. Uh, so, in a different presentation, or in a, I'm sorry, in a different video, uh, we actually set up a couple of backgrounds, a primary and a backup. They're actually in our super wide, new super wide 8192 by 1080, right? So, uh, our new super wide input. Yeah, super wide input. See the other video that's linked in the, yeah. in the description of this video. Um, so, the, the gag here is that we've got two inputs coming in. Uh, we've got one primary, also known as background number one. We've got a, a secondary or backup, also known as background number two. First, background number one is going to fail, and it's going to automatically switch over to background number two. So, uh, how do we set that up? Well, it's actually ridiculously simple. If we take a look at the native background tab, here's our uh, background, DP background number one. We hit these little two blue carrots that face downward. That's a new, that's a new item. That's a new item in Event Master tool set, yep. new, new GUI part. If we take a look at it, we can have up to uh, three, here are our three backup, or here are our backups. We can have up to three of them, right? Now, each of these backups has to be equal or lesser to the capacity that the original is. So in other words, you can have a 4K primary and a 2K backup, yep. but you can't have a 2K primary and a 4K backup. Absolutely, yeah, for sure. So uh, it's as simple as, uh, by default, it's set to auto switch on. So if one fails, it'll auto switch to program. Now by fail, we mean if a sync loss. A sync loss, yes. Not a... Not if your slide sorter goes auto, you know, if slide sorter automatically comes up, that's a different scenario, which we'll talk about in a second. Totally. But we're talking about a, a sync loss. A sync loss, exactly. Okay. So we're just gonna set up backup number one as uh, DP background two which is our secondary input, right? This is this guy down here. And we can do, you know, a live, we can do the live input, or we can even do a still. If you see in the still, or in this, in this dropdown, we have the still that I saved from earlier. So we see it shows us that they're actually good and valid and ready to be used as a backup. And uh, that's pretty much it. As soon now as- So this, what's happening here is if the main should fail, it's gonna to go to backup one. Yep. If backup one should fail, it's gonna to go to backup two. Correct. So if you lose all your backgrounds, you're gonna end up with a still store. Yeah, totally. Okay. If you get down far enough. If you get down far enough. <laughs> Absolutely. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna illustrate a failure. Okay. Right? So we have auto switch enabled by default. So we're gonna fail. So there goes background one, right? It, it, uh, it, it uh, turned red. Dead, it died on us. Right. And you noticed then our event master tool set automatically switched to background two, right? And uh, this little blue radio button illuminated, indicating that it's now on DP background number two. So DP background number two is live, as we see with our still with our uh, icons here, but as well as well as in our. So list. if we were to lose the second DisplayPort input, now we've gone to the third scenario, which is the still store. Yep, and that's live. And here's our still store number one. So if we were to restore all of those, right, if they were right, to come back, yeah. if they were to come back. Which is the question is it does it automatically go back to the primary or do you have to initiate that? It sticks to whichever one is, is live currently. Mm -hmm. Now, we do that because we want you to imagine, like say your primary and your backup, um, they start you know, throttling sync, right? Like where they're- They're they, not stable. They're not stable. They come in, they go out, they come in, they go out, or they modulate sync or however you want to say it. Um, it would flash back and forth, right? So we want it to be, we want it to come up, clean. be stable, be clean, and have the operator actually make the transition back. So I see that our background one has come back. Yep. It's green. That one's green. And even our backup came back. Right. So if we wanted to go back to our backup, we could simply select the radio button for the backup. Or if we want to go back to the primary. We simply select the button for the primary. Now the, the beauty of this background or an input uh, substitution, is if you have any presets written with the main, um, if you switch to the backup, either manually or through the sync loss, yeah. 
you don't have to recreate all those presets. The presets will automatically use the backup source yep. instead of the primary. So you don't have to create those backup scenarios as much. 100%. Right. Which so, is good. Yeah, it, 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 and it, I don't want to say it alleviates, but it's a different, it's an alternative method to creating, say, something like a uh, um, relative Relative preset. preset. Yeah. <laughs> so the other scenario is, let's say, the most common one is you're doing PowerPoint slides, and all of a sudden you accidentally hit the, the escape key, and now you're in the slides order. Right. That's not a sync loss, nope. but you have to get the backup to screen. There's a way to do this easily, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely, and that's just to go hit the radio button. Next to the background input. Next to the background input. And now input. it replaces that main source, and again, if you go to another preset that's using that graphic, it will use the backup 100%. instead of the primary. Yep. So this is a huge feature for live shows. Um, and any kind of scenario you've got, you need a main and a backup graphics, main and a backup whatever. Yep. Right. Now, I do want to talk about one thing before we move on. The caveats. There's always caveats. There's just one small caveat, and it's not really a caveat. It's actually a great thing, uh, is the source files. So a lot of our advanced users love to use our source file schematic or source, source file scheme, um, and we love that, and I love to use it when I'm operating a show. Well. If you do use source files, your source files have to match between your primary and your backup. Now when you say matching, mm -hmm. you're talking about number of them. Number of them. Now do the, the parameters for each of those source files have to match each other? They don't. They don't have to, but they don't have ideally to. they should. They definitely should. If so if you're, you're making one as a, let's say, input with black and white versus uh -huh. color, yep. you should make that the same because it's always going to replace based on the source file that you're currently on. Correct. So if I'm on source file two of input one, mm -hmm. it's gonna to go to source file two of the backup. That's right, 100%. If I wanna make sure they look the same, I gotta make sure my source file looks. Exactly. Well, that's a great feature. I'm excited about it. I can't wait for you guys to get your hands on it and uh, use this on show site. I think a lot of the, uh, the LED and projector people will be very happy because they've always wanted to have a fail safe for a lot of things. Uh, I'm Tim Cashel with Evolve Academy. Again, Vincent Ayala with Barco. Thank you for watching the video.